Okay, let's start uh, today's talking. Uh, today's speaker is uh, Min Tan Chen. Uh, some of you may not see him for uh, frequently. He's actually uh, the deputy director of the Hawaii operation. So he's often, uh, he's mostly in the Hawaii Hilo office, ASIA Hawaii Hilo office. And uh, so that the uh, brief, uh, Introductions that uh, he got the PhD from the uh, University of Illinois Champaign in 1993, and uh, he moved to the ASIA in 1995. So he's one of the uh, older person, longer <laughs> person to stay in uh, our institute, except you leave. Uh, I'm the <laughs> Minche. Oh, yeah, yeah, Minche. Yeah. Minche is the oldest. Yeah, <laughs> I'm <laughs> number three. <laughs> and uh, he moved to Hawaii from 2003, and since then that he was doing the uh, uh, deputy uh, director of Hawaii operation, and uh, he helped the uh, SMA, Amoeba, uh, and uh, JCMT after uh, JCMT moved to Yale, and also uh, currently he's working on GLT and Burst. So today. Uh, he's going to talk about the Greenland telescope, like on shadow and the photo. So let's welcome our speaker. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I'm the oldest. I'm not the oldest. <coughs> have, have we ever given a uh, Greenland telescope's talk here? In the no. right. You did, right? Yeah. When, when was that? A few years ago. <laughs> <laughs> so things have changed a lot. Since then, uh, so uh, so my talk is about the Greenland Telescope. This is the telescope that we built. I will put in Greenland right now. Um, then I will talk about that the uh, the black hole shadow that's that we've been imaged, I've been observed in the past several years. Um, also. Uh, the result, well, with the Greenland Telescope, the result will come out tomorrow, like for your preview. I'm, I'm not going to show the photo. I, I, I will just, I will just tell you that this, we're going to have the result coming out tomorrow afternoon. OK? Um, but there will be a, a, a public talk to address the, uh, this new image tomorrow night. There will be food and a drink. So please come. <laughs> uh, so how then, I think it's. The, the most important of my talk. I, I want you to, to, uh, to. I want to make you excited about what we what we can do with the Greenland Telescope. No, what we could do with, with the Greenland Telescope. Maybe I'm going to talk about these things called photon ring. Okay. Uh, this project initially was uh, its collaboration between the HIA, Academia Sinica, and, uh, and the CFA, Smithsonian Astrophysical Observatory. Um, we started the project back in 2010. Um, is, so the project has been going on for, for 13, 14 years till now. I feel the distance, it's so, people are so far away. <laughs> 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 no one's sitting here. <laughs> uh, so lately, um, we also have been working with our Dan Danish Partner, the Danish partner is a, a research a group of people, a consortium uh, in this in this in the list of the university and institute in Denmark. Okay, we've been working with them for many years now, uh, and we are actually we have a, a letter of agreement with them. Um, they are we are working to to make the Danish partner as our official partner in the Greenland Telescope. In fact, they already. They, they get the promise from a private foundation, and that foundation promised to, <coughs> to give us, how much is that? Equipment about seven to eight million dollar, US dollar, for the Greek, for the Danish people to join this project. But that, the money is still not enough that we require, require our own our own budget and also Smithsonian's budget. So we are we are doing all the preparation to uh, try to make this become real. 
to, to get into our the final destination of the, of the telescope, which I'm going to tell you. Okay, so all I know of my talk, I'll show you something you are very familiar with, the image of the black holes, shadows, um, and then I will go into the photon rings. I'll tell you, I'm sure that you all know about photon rings, uh, but I will, I will say that again. Um, and then I will talk about the Greenland telescope and eventually I'll, I'll tell you why we are in a very in, in, in a unique position to capture the photon wave image if we move to the Greenland summit. Okay? Alright? So, can you turn off the light over there? Is that okay? So this is, uh, I think you're familiar with this, this, this two image. So the one on the, on the, on the left, that the, uh, the, the uh, EHT observation result that we released back in 2019, M87. Um, uh, on the right, this is a photo that we released. We, when I say we, meaning that EHT, Event Horizon Telescope, because we are we are we are we are partner in the EHT, uh, with a major partner in EHT actually. So on the on the right, this is the uh, the Sagittarius star, black hole image. So this is the image of the radio wave emission from surrounding the, the black hole, black holes, right? I'm sure you all know about this, but as a, as a as a talk, I have to go through all this mountain stuff just to, to uh, repeat what I what, what you already know. So, um, M87 is the same scale, so M87 is smaller, but the uh, the Milky Way, the central Milky, Milky Way black hole shadow is larger. So, this is basic knowledge. Okay, uh, but I think M87 is our uh, is, is people's fabric because basically because it's, la it's larger in size although it looks smaller. Um, also because it's the variation of the, s the spin of st the variation of the uh, of M87 uh, is slower in a matter of days. But for the Milky Way black hole, all this accretion disk, all this image surrounding it, it changed, changed almost every few hours. So that's making it very hard to capture its image, also analyze it. Um, my talk will focus on the M87. So how do we uh, capture, how do we capture this image? Uh, for those, who, those of you who are not in EHT, uh, let me show you, this is the the, uh, the VOBI array operating in sub-millimeter wavelength around the world. Uh, for the HIA's uh, effort in the past week, contributing in when in this, in this uh, station. So the sub-millimeter array, SMA, uh, JCMP, and also ALMA. Uh, later on, for the for the Greenland telescope, which is you see on the top here. By the way, this is Greenland. When I first when we start started Greenland project, I, I, I did not know where Greenland is. <laughs> I thought it was somewhere somewhere I don't know somewhere green in Amazon or something. But actually, it's half of it is in Arctic Circle. So uh, come back to the EHT. Well, we actually join the GOT joint project in 2018. So all the black hole results right now that you you, you saw you see I put it on your web. So all, all the all the images that you saw you see right now is actually from the 2017 observation. Well except that the uh, the GMEA result but that is not EHT. So EHT result right now is only only the result coming out of 2017 observation, which the Greenland telescope wasn't in there. Uh, so 
Maybe that time that you know that we we do operate the SMA, which is which is I'm I'm I'm, I'm, I'm participating, and that's our my daily operation there. Um, we also we we are we are in the in the consortium of the, uh, the Alma project that we built this integration center. I'm also lately we we, we did it with the Bang One project. Yeah, we are heavily involved in that. Uh, we also part of the EAO, East Asia, East Asia Observatory. Um, actually, the observation of of EHD, the many would, would contribute to the uh, to the EAO in the 2017. I'm um, starting from 2018. We we have the uh, the Green Man Telescope. Uh, so this is the topic of this of this talk. What you see, the photo here show you is the uh, the telescope. Uh, in a deep winter. The location of this, this place is called Turi. Used to be called Turi. Uh, but now I have changed the name to Pitupi. But I, I will, I think, I, I have, my habit will keep saying, referring to uh, Turi, okay? So Turi is in the northwestern corner of Greenland. Uh, the location of this is, is at 76 degrees north, very north. So if you go there, the first thing you're excited is well, you, you can look at the no, northern lights, right? But then you found that you, can, you had to look south to see the northern light. You know why? Because the northern light mostly happened around, I think, about 60 or 70 degrees. So at this location, you have to look south in order to see the northern light. Uh, Rarely, the northern light will come up to our, to our sky on time, but that's where you, you have to be very, very lucky. So anyway, let's come back to this. So this is 2017 image of the telescope. Uh, you can see that all this container here, this is our operation room. So this is the uh, control room. Um, this is a VOBI, all the disk, we put it there. Uh, we have a receiver container. We also have some workshop, everything. Uh, you can see that we still got some snow on the dish. This is, this is before we, we put in something called the ice, that we can get, re get rid of the ice. This was before that time, so like you see that snow here. Uh, to get rid of snow is actually not that difficult here. So we use a long bloom to, uh, to get rid of the snow. So that is not a major issue. So this is the, uh, in the winter time of 2017. Greenland telescope. I will come back to it, come back to uh, in, into the more detail of the telescope later in, the, in my talk. So the status, let me, let, let me tell you the status first. <coughs> so <coughs> yeah, yeah, it has been, the telescope has been in operation since 2018. I mean, participating, participating in the, uh, in many in VOBI observation. Uh, our first slide is actually, we, we obtained the first slight of uh, Satoki and his company, obtained the first slide back in end of 2017. Actually, that was about six months after we put in the, the receiver into, the, into the, the antenna. So if you are in this kind of business, you will see, you, you, it, you, you, you will think that that's, that's quite, it's a miracle that actually make it work in six months. Uh, so we have been constant, uh, we have been observation with two major VLBI network. Uh, namely one is the Event Horizon Telescope, EHT. Um, that operated mostly in the sub-millimeter wavelength. Um, another, another network is called Global Millimeter Wave, um, VLBI Array. This is a project that's the uh, um, um, led by the uh, the Max Planck Institute in Europe. Um, this is operating in the millimeter wavelength, so it's a longer wavelength. Uh, the frequency is lower; it's about 86 gigahertz. Um, so, uh, so over all this time, we've been through the uh, COVID. Um, and we 
even during the COVID, we're still operating every year. And we, we, uh, we rarely missed a operation, uh, observations. Um, that's because, because during the process, we can we actually develop a remote control with a very minimum human inter inter in intervention at the site. So this is remote operation is very critical, particularly for the future operation in summit. I will come to that again later. Uh, the amazing about this slide, about this tool slide, is that we can actually observe 345 gigahertz. Okay, so this is this is also another magical, magical, magical uh, effect of the site is that the, the site is actually closer to the to the uh, to the sea level. Uh, you can see that you, you, you want to you want you want to observe even the 230 gigahertz at Hilo. That that's all in th in this area in in Taipei. That's impossible. That's even 86 gigahertz. That's impossible. But truly, because it's so cold, and it's so dry, we can actually we can actually observe 345 gigahertz. That's well, it's not perfect, but we can we can we can observe it. So this year is very important. The next next. Uh, next week, or not next week, in, in April, the EHT will try to observe the, the highest frequency, their high fre highest frequency, 345 gigahertz, which will be uh, even higher frequency, uh, shorter wavelength than previous tr uh, try. So that GOT will be part of it. <coughs> um, uh, we have been in the preparation of moving to uh, Greenland Summit. Uh, what is about Summit? I'll talk about that. Okay, so this is our first, it's the first scientific result that feature Greenland telescope data from a GMBA. Um, it's a, a published in Nature um, in April this year. Um, you, again, this is observed right after our, our com commissioning the, uh, the telescope. Um, Observa observation frequency 86 gigahertz, um, uh, then mm, the, tomorrow there will be another result coming out from the EHT observation. So this, this result is show you a ring-like accretion structure. <coughs> Actually, the KEG is the, uh, is, is the uh, uh, communication author, one of the second author and is the communication author. Um, as you know that the, the VOBI, this kind of VOBI observation is required many people to work together. And that's why it's been the uh, uh, com communication also is very important uh, in, in the project. So the difference of this, uh, this, this the result I just show you compared to the uh, 2017 observation from EHT is like this. So this is the uh, 2017, I and mean, then this is actually from the uh, GMB observation. So the difference, the difference, the difference of this, we're looking at actually the observation taking place in only few days, uh, different, uh, different apart, few days apart. It's all in 2017 April. We observed EHT first, and then observed GMBA after that. So it's the same image, but the analysis from these two images, come up with the difference in this ring. Show you the ring here. So this is the uh, whoops. The inner ring is actually from the EHT, and the outer ring is from the GMBA. It's longer, has longer wavelength. So the the interpretation of this. The interpretation of the difference of this this of accretion disk ring here is that a longer wavelength, 86 gigahertz, 3.5 millimeter wavelength, the optical depth is thicker, so it cannot penetrate, it cannot look into the uh, into the black hole. So that's why when you have, uh, look at that, at the longer wavelength, at, at three millimeter wavelength, is 
you are pushing this ring of the analogy actually bigger than, than your shorter wavelength. So it depends on lower distance. Right. The big one. So the GMB, GMBA. So this is this is EHT. Um, and then so this is affiliated with the uh, GMBA. The same day. Well, a few days apart. A few, a few days mm -hmm. one, one year ago. So the same so team, we, we are not constructed yet. No, no. Oh, yeah, yeah. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> 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 well, I can tell you that the, uh, the 2018, 20, 20, 2018 state are all, also the same. <laughs> <laughs> About the same. <laughs> yeah. So, so this is the point I try to make is that you want you, you want to look at the black hole. You need to look at the right frequency. You prefer to be higher frequency, shorter wavelength. In order in order to penetrate it, in order to get to go through the this thickness of the accretion disks. So I'll come to that because my talk I will eventually go to even push down up to 600 gigahertz. That's that's what we can do with the GLP. All right, so let's, let's try to dissect what is the, uh, what image is about, right? The, so the, the simulation, if the black hole in, in the red dot there, um, and then the, the photon coming down, coming in, how, how do we see the photon, how do we see the image? Right, so this is the, the theory try to characterize, to characterize the, all these photons that we receive using something called the, the index N. So this is N equal to, So if you do a ray tracing, if you mean by putting in all the general relativity and the fluid dynamic, whatever it is, you should be expecting something like this. Mm, that's simply because uh, uh, the length of uh, uh, rays increases. Yes, that's right. So the point here I try to make here is is that. Well, if, if as a simulation, as a, as, as a video dynamic, you, you, something, you see something like this. Suppose, actually, this is not the right, right direction rotation. This is, this, this is you're looking at the M87 from upside down. So you see that the, this, this blur, more outer, outside, outside light emission that's come from the uh, accretion disk is so-called N equals zero. That's it's only being deflected, deflected slightly uh, when they're passing through the black hole. But the inside here, this is different. Once, once you get to n equal one or in n equal two, it actually there's there is a there's a there is a bound of it, but unstabilized. Which this model? This is this model. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm, so, I'm sorry. Uh, uh, well, the naive method is to assume a homogeneous uh, entity. Right. Uh, however, uh, more sophisticated modeling is to right. uh, at least a few uh, this model such as uh, chain or man. Right. So this is one of the models, so right? It depends on the utility distribution. Right. Exactly. So what we saw from this, because EHT observation, our observation is long exposure, taking a, taking a night to, uh, to, to generate one pop, well, one, one night long integration to generate one, one picture. So you, you see something blurry like this, um, and then you see that you don't really see the ring. Um, uh, the interpretation of that, well, there may be a ring, there may be not a ring, right? It depends on the model. But if there's a ring, hiding behind it, that it should be something like 
you can be separate into them into a component like this. So this is a, a, a post made by Michael Johnson in CFA. Uh, so the image that we saw will be a photon wave, uh, well, a, oh, a, 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 a emission coming from the accretion disk, the outside accretion disk. So astronomers like to refer this as astrophysics effect. Because, because what? Because all these photons did not really bound to the, uh, to the black hole. You have to be, whatever photon coming by, skipping, skipping the black hole, they will, they will, when it got, come to our eyes, then it will come to something that will be, that will depend on the, your, your physical property of the accretion disk, right? So every black hole has different kind of accretion disk situation, so that would be, that would be different in, for, for all the different black holes. However, when it's going to a black hole's bound orbit like this, when you have to go through at least one round of the black hole, or two rounds of black hole, you're actually coming up in a fixed orbit like this. Um, uh, this the diameter of, of the ring would depend on the mass of the black hole, mostly. Follow me, right? Can you follow me? So, the image, what's the next? So the, the image, what, 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 we, what we saw right now, what we, what we see in all the image is because, uh, well, we don't have, first of all, the image is covered by the, uh, the by the by the by the accretion disk emission. Um, we, the theory calculation tell you that <coughs> the, the light from the photon wave is actually weaker. It will be will, uh, will be hiding will be dominated by the accretion disk for uh, astrophysical phenomena. Um, in order to get through that. You need to get get past this astrophysical emission, um, which is require you to get to higher frequency, or and also has to be even higher resolution. All right. Right. I will show you a simulation done by a KG. Do you consider the black hole structure because uh, because uh, because the accretion flow is forced? The black black hole thickness is comparable to the uh, radioactive structure, so the accretion becomes more or less spherical, not discrete. Yeah, it's yeah. possible. Yes, it's Do possible. You such an effect? Yes. Okay. Well, this is just uh, something that the uh, that the NASA made to interpret the, uh, this black hole that's shown in the, uh, the movie Interstellar. It's, this is physical possible, but it's in uh, reality it's impossible because the, uh, the accretion uh, disk is very too thin. Uh, just a mad, just a mad right? So this is, what you saw on the top, this is actually the accretion disk bent to the top, so you see it. Um, but then this, this, this actually the accretion disk, bottom of accretion disk and the back is bent down. Uh, the photon ring here, I try to show you that this photon ring is this. This is the photon ring. Okay? So, so how to image the photon ring? So, follow me. Uh, so right now there's, a, there, there's already a proposal one to, one to uh, uh, no, take a step back. Because it, with the current planning of the EHD, even the NGHD, Right now, they're only planning the up to uh, 345 gigahertz. Um, with, the, uh, with the baseline as big as, uh, as the Earth, you still cannot resolve the photon ring. Not at 345. Um, not with the current baseline. So to, there's, a, there's a Michael, I think CFA has a proposal. They're proposing to send a satellite to L2 point. Um, just is for 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 the work to to image to to uh, to to, de to detect the photon ring. 
So that's one way to do it. You, you have to send a, so you have to launch a satellite app in order to, to get your long, long baseline for resolution. Okay. Another way to do it is to observe a higher frequency. Uh, you have to observe higher than, than 345. But really, the, uh, the 345, uh, higher than 345, you either do it at 500 or do it at 600. But not right now, the 600, because ALMA has a 600 gigahertz in the secret, so we, we, we are proposing that we want to do it at the six, 600 uh, gigahertz uh, frequency. Problem is that the site, um, there's really not that many sites that can do 600 gigahertz, such high frequency. So right now, there's a Hawaii site, um, there's Anwa site, and we know that, we know that there's the Greenland Summit, also one of the sites we can do it. I'll show you the data. Um, some potential sites for the short baseline would be Apex, um, uh, um, Yama. Yama is actually an Argentina project. Um, uh, also the uh, SMTO, this is the Mount Graham in uh, Arizona. Um, so, this is the, uh, the before we, when we started the, the Greenland project, we, we already sent, sent a, to a site survey as a Greenland summit. Uh, talking about the summit, you need to know the, uh, the geography of, of, of the Greenland. Greenland basically is, is 50, 50 times bigger than Taiwan. Um, is uh, is is it's ground it, it's land is actually this is flat, but on top of it is about two three kilometer of snow. Um, it has the highest point is about three three kilometer high. Um, that's the place we uh, we, we want to we want to move there. Um, so from from our data, uh, this is the satellite data. That's what I show you. That what uh, is all the surveys, water vapor, water vapor content of, of atmosphere. You can see that the Greenland here is always very dry. This is summertime. This is winter time. Um, also, from from our survey data, this is Sadoki's work, taken from the uh, population 2017. You can see that the uh, you can look at this. This is let me tell you the uh, the water vapor precipitable water vapor, which is related to the opacity of the atmosphere. So we compare that the Greenland, Alma, and South Pole. Uh, summit of Greenland is actually comparable to Alma site in the winter time. Um, also in the summer time, it's, 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 not, it's not as good, but it's still workable. So this is what I say that Greenland, Greenland is, a, is a rare place that you can do this such high frequency observation. So let's talk about the Greenland summit. Right now, the telescope is sitting here. Tuli, this is a US air base. Um, that's, that provides our, our support. And um, the summit is here. Um, this is the reason we put it here is because it is, there's, a, there's a way traversing the pool of the heavy stuff from, from Tuli all the way to the summit. It's about 100, no, 1,000 1, kilometers. Take about two weeks of, of moving to get there. Um, it's, it actually has a, has a, has a site. It's operated by NSF. Well, we were actually surprised to find the site back in when we started the project. I'm a, I'm a contact them. Oh, we want to move a telescope here. I'm, a, I'm a, the, uh, the operator there, NSF, the uh, person who's in charge of the site, actually very happy to uh, accommodate us. Anyway, so that, this is a site they, uh, the NSF set up there back from 1990, 1990, um, for study the, uh, the, the weather. Uh, also ice core, um, uh, clean snow, that sort of thing. Um, the site is actually lower, it's about 70, 72 degree north. Um, uh, it's about, usually in the, in the summertime, about 50 people living here. 
um, winter time is is probably down to about five pe five people. Um, it's winter over. It actually is better than South Pole because if you if you heard if you have friend work in South Pole, you know that this uh, winter over there. Uh, once you go into South Pole you have in the winter, you have to stay there nine months before before you see the next ship coming in. Um, here in the winter, is the longest uh, winter over is about two months in the winter time. Uh, so in the summertime, the carry in or coming in and out is through, uh, can usually through the air plant, C-130. Very cool, that is with ski, landing in and taking off. Uh, so right now, NSF, the National Science Foundation has been doing expansion of the site. Um, they, have, they, already have, they already have a, have a few of uh, science projects going on there. Uh, one, of, one of the big one is Ice Cube. It's actually extended Ice Cube project. It's doing radio, radio Ice Cube. Okay, um, uh, we, are, we are talking to the NSF about, about moving there. So, uh, a little bit of TLG history, in case you don't know. So it was a, it, the antenna actually is the, is a North America prototype. Okay, um, we proposed that we want to use it for the OBIs, and they, they actually awarded to us, uh, but they awarded to the Smithsonian. The antenna is is is, is under a, a Smithsonian's name, uh, and we had to do a lot of retrofitting because the antenna itself is not designed for Arctic operation. Um, we, we went through a whole, whole series of uh, outfitting, doing this, doing that. Uh, and finally, in 2017, we moved, we take all the parts, uh, totally 200 tons of components, antenna component, all the accessory, in 2017 by ship from US to Greenland. Um, in, in two summers, we put it, put it, put it together. Um, this is a photo of 2020 when it's operating. By the way, this is also the nighttime, no sun. But this, you can see that there's actually some lights. So antenna is a, is a 12 meter. Um, antenna itself is about 115 tons or 120 tons, depends, depends on how, much, how many things we, how we count it. Um, operation condition, it can operate down to mi minus 50 degree C. Um, the secondary operation would be minus 55. Well, I mean, secondary meaning that we can uh, we we can tolerate some 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 deterioration of, of performance, but it, it can still observe. Uh, lower than minus 55, then we we call it a survival condition. That we don't operate it, it is in such a cold temperature. Uh, so put it in survival, hope everything survives after that such cold temperature. So this is what the, te the telescope looks like. Um, all the star thing is, is, is a thing that we actually replace it. So replace it meaning that it's from the, uh, the old uh, prototype. So this is uh, secondary. Um, that is our long-term collaborator, PLU, standing there. The secondary is a new one. Um, <laughs> it's, uh, because of the temperature, you have to, you have to survive the cold temperature, so we can, only, we can only find something that can chop at two hertz. But it should be okay, because the, in the Arctic atmosphere, tend to be very stable. So chopping two hertz, we think that's sufficient to, uh, get to, uh, to do the, the, the uh, mutating. Uh, function. Uh, right now, there's a three cartridge. The, the, the uh, BOBI receiver has three frequencies. We can operate them three frequency. Uh, I already told you that the 86 gigahertz. Uh, we have a 20, 230 gigahertz. Uh, originally from OBU, uh, Osaka Prefectural University. Uh, and we just changed that to an to a Alma Band 6 uh, receiver. Uh, we also have a 345 gigahertz that uh, that was from Iran. Um, this is what the process looks like. Mm. 
Where are all my people? <laughs> Where are all my Toshiba people? <laughs> Not here. So all these things, those things, all these things are were, were integrated, built, tested in on the in the in the tenth floor here. Um, on, um, been uh, installed. Particularly this one. This this one we we build a build a second receiver system. Um, we put it in JCMP. So it's operating in the JCMP. Uh, this is Johnson. Johnson here, but it's the in, in the work that putting the receiver into JCMP. So JCMP has a has a has identical uh, receiver system as uh, the GLT. Uh, I'm going to skip this. It's too technical. <laughs> this is our work. <laughs> this is my work. Okay, this is photogrammetry. Photogrammetry, that's the, um, when we first put the, uh, the fish up, that's the, the, uh, the fish actually is quite bad, 170 micron. That's because the, uh, when we lift it from the dish, uh, put it together a little bit to, to the top, and we, 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 we start with 170 micron. So the, so, so the data that we observed in 2018 is always, always this, this, this such bad surface. But it works, we got the data. I'm a lady now, we decided to the, uh, the right side, we, we can push it down to 70 micron using this technique called photogrammetry. Uh, this is the antenna control system. This is the, uh, the, the fringe detection that we, we got in 2018. I think this is from the uh, 2018 January when we did the uh, dress rehearsal, which, is, which was a miracle. <coughs> So, mo moving to summit, I think the, the telescope work um, is, is we we already into uh, preparing in the, in a remote operation way is it work in coal uh, is ready to be moved to summit and operate, but moving there is dangerous, um, difficult, and expensive. Nevertheless, it's doable. Um, operation cost is high, as, as always. That's, that's just because it's uh, such such a unique place. Uh, difficult to assess, summer or winter. Uh, quite exciting to go there. Um, so we are uh, once you go there, you can do this two, six ninety observation. So let's talk about how to move how, how to move the telescope there. Um, right now, the telescope is on a solid ground. Um, uh, when, you, when we want to move there into the, uh, to the summit, we need to go to go through the ice sheet, go through a transition from the land to ice. So what you see here is actually at the transition, right? With, with three of us, I'm one of them, standing on the ice sheet. And we can see the ground, and we can see the ice melting. Uh, yeah, it's melting. It's melting really bad. But there's a lot of ice there, a lot of snow there. It takes a million years for, 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 for the summit to disappear. So I'm not, I'm not going to worry about that. Uh, what, I'm going to sh what I'm showing you is this. We spread out three of us. I'm here, uh, I'm here. Uh, Johnson here and the Barton here. And this ice sheet. So what we need to do. <laughs> drone. Drone. Yeah, yeah drone. Yeah. So this is wrong. Yeah, okay. So see that this is this is a this is actually a typical part. However, that's NSF they already they have done this a few times in the past. And actually the US the US military started doing this back in the 50s when the Cold War started. Um, they, you know, they they built a military base somewhere about Couple hundred meters, a uh, couple hundred kilometers inland, they build all the uh, all, all the missile network in there. But they, they abandoned the project because you know I, entire ice will move and they will deform everything. It's kind of, 
they, they, they decided that's too dangerous. But the transporting from through land wise, this is to them, this is a known technique. So this is one challenge we need to do, and we will have to uh, uh, engage this, uh, this called Traverse Team from NSF. This is one thing we, we will have to do. Uh, just in case that if we, we do have a plan B, the plan B is to, uh, to, to hire a flying ship. That Philippe already been talking to this company in France, right? That's called Flying Whale. Flying Whale. The whale is flying like this. Um, and then that's our plan B in, ca in case that uh, thing happens to get planet proved to be too difficult. So we we'll take the whole antenna component and ship it right into summit. So plan B, plan B that is very exciting, uh, but it will take you, it, it's never been done before. Although the company said that this is, should be, able, should be able to do it, but they always say that when they want money. Uh, so the antenna will be look different in the sense that we will put antenna on skis. I mean, it will be on skis all the time. Okay, so this is the base of the antenna. Uh, it will be on six skis. This will be the design. Well, need to be studied at the time. Um, and then we will put the whole 120 tons of antenna on top of this. Why? So originally, we're thinking to put it on something called space frame. So we built this uh, five meter tall space frame, huge, and then we have to bury it into the ice. You, you have to understand, ice sheet, the ice itself, it's not stable. It move, it's moving all the time. Every, every night it moves. So it's, it's soft. So you need to build something big in order to, to, to support the antenna. Um, the second, the snow actually drifting around there. So even then it doesn't, even some is very dry, but the snow is just flying in from all the, all the places. So in the, in the cold snow drifting, that people in, in Taiwan never know about this, because there's every year <coughs> there, if we, if we build, we'll put a structure like this there, the, the snow will come over to cover it, um, it something like 60 centimeter a year accumulation. South Pole had a similar problem, but the South Pole there, snow accumulation is, is slower. But nevertheless, it also is still there. It will cover it. So what, if we build something permanent like this, um, after, I don't know, three years, all will be covered, and then we need to move, then meaning that we need to build another, uh, another space frame. The space frame, co this, this thing, a lot of money, a lot, a lot of effort to put it in. So that's why we want to put it on ski. Um, every two years, three years, we will put it, put it to different places. I know what you're thinking. You think this is crazy. I'll show you something. So this is what uh, our Danish partner coming in. So this group, they are they work in the near four institute. Um, uh, they are they. Uh, they're doing research in on, on Greenland ice sheet. Um, they do the study. They, they, they drill, drill the ice cores. The study. So this is what I call traversing. They're using this uh, this machine to uh, <coughs> to pull the. Uh, Everything. It actually, because we are not, we are, we are not, we are, we are, in, we are not in a, we are not a small snow country. I know we, we did not know how easy it is to, to do things on, on snow like this. So you do a big baby stuff, no? Yeah, just one, one tractor. Well, I mean, on base. Yeah. yeah, that's a lot. Uh, I will show the sleds one thing, and then I will show you the uh, the ski. Okay. This is the uh, 
the, uh, people stay in there, they call it the strawberry pots. Yeah. But here it's flat, right? Yeah. Flat and smooth. I'll come to our logistics. So, um, remember we saw that big dome, the black big dome, right? I showed the, 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 the 65 tons. Oops, sorry. So this is when they, when they pull the, the 60, 65 ton dome. So the dome is on ski. That's, this is this is where we got our idea about this, about putting a den on ski. And then only using one 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 one, one tractor. And this is actually inside the dome. Well, that's the leader of the, of the project. Doctor? Body? She led the whole, whole, whole expedition. something more exciting is Yes. Right. How do you, how do you, how do you Well, it's, it, 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 it will fuse with the ice because of weight, the barrier. That's weight. Yeah. Weight can stabilize the ice. I mean, it, it, will, it will be frozen. It will bury by, with, by ice, it will, be, it, it will be frozen. Okay. So, we talk about that later. Um, so the logistic is that we're going to get the uh, the, the, the sober traversing team, that's the NSF traversing team, to get us from the uh, from the land to go through the transition. So the transition will, will last about 100, 200 kilometer inland into the ice sheet, and um, then our Danish partner will come down to take us up, and then pull pull all the way to summit. So that's that's the uh, the logistic we are, we are we are planning to do. Um, they, that's, that's why we want to work with the sandwich. Now, let's come to, uh, I want to go to, uh, using the last few minutes to talk about the six, why we can do the photo only. Uh, this is actually done by uh, KG. I'm a, uh, I'm a scholar. Uh, I'm showing you is that <coughs> the, the, the blue part, blue curve is UV plan with 345 using the current EHT configuration. Using this, you cannot you cannot resolve the photon grid. You have to add in a six ninety observation. I'm um, uh, scaled it down to three forty three forty five. So we're betting on that the optical depth from six ninety to three forty five is 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 thin. Is we can do that using uh, this this frequency synthesis from six from six 
690 <coughs> down to 645. And what you will result, we want to add in this six baseline. So this six baseline is Alma, Hawaii, and Greenland. Uh, actually, last week that Jeff just just reminded me that we actually need the the, the mid mid baseline uh, point. So that's why we need, we also need to engage Apex, uh, engage SMTO. SM, SMTO is actually the perfect place. Um, the Alma too. Uh, to add in the uh, the, 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 tra the, 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 the trace in, in the mid midpoint here, in order that to do the, uh, the, the uh, frequency synthesis. So, so this is the relative calculation with infinite resolution of, of, of the uh, of, of the photon ring. I mean, this is actually something that uh, if we combine the EHT uh, Alma with with photosynthesis. Uh, Frequency synthesis, synthesis up to 345, but without the 690 components. This is the, this is the image, the proper image that you get. This simulation. I mean, this is that KG simulated using GOT Hawaii Alma. This six more uh, 690 observation or 660 observation, and this is without the uh, the mid the mid baseline part. So, one of ring here is actually outside here. Um, inner, inner ring here, this is actually not photon ring, this actually is the, the jet, um, the, the funnel of the jet. So this is not the, the something we are after, we are actually after this, this part. So in current, current simulation, in, you, using the EHT data right now, that's, I'm repeating what Jeff told me uh, a few days ago. Using the EHT data right now, uh, we, Look at using the image, we can estimate the mass of the black hole down in, in about 10% of uncertainty. We know the black hole is there, but the, the mass of it is is 10% error there. But you, if we can get it down to to photon ring like this, even or even better, we can narrow it down. We can narrow it, it down, and really it is a really really verification testing of gravitation, uh, general relativity in, this, in, in a strong gravitation field like this. So, and because of that, we, we are testing the, uh, the 690, 6, 660 uh, VODI right now between Tensi and the Lama. Um, we, are, we are asking for time to do it. Um, so, anyway. Uh, come to my summary. Uh, it's, it's my belief that this uh, GOT is, we have a, a very unique opportunity to, to, uh, to do the experiment and uh, to image the photon ring. We have this opportunity. We have this opportunity if, if we move to the summit. Um, and then to do this uh, 690 VOD observation together with the EHT. Um, I hope that I conveyed the idea to you. Um, that's why that we, our entire GOD team is working very hard to try to realize that. I, right now we are looking for resources to do it. Um, we already have, like I said, we already have a, a, a considerable, a, a major resource coming from Danish part. Um, uh, we, we are, we are, we are, uh, we, we should say are looking for, and we are, we are planning our part, Taiwan part, and also try to convince our Smithsonian part to, to, to go into this project. Okay, that's all I want to say. Thank you. Okay. Uh, so. Uh, I don't like those patches. I think if, if we add in the short best baseline, put in Apex, put in Yama, 
But that's assuming that we can we can do do observation like that. I think your image will be much better. Yeah. <laughs> Any other question? No. Do you have a plan to also examine jet jet emission? Jet. Do you have a plan to examine jet emission? Can we do it at, the, at this high frequency? At uh, yes, I think that EHP proposes simultaneous observation with three times the gamma magic to this jet. Why not we do that? Uh, I, I will be <laughs> 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 the EHP project scientists. <laughs> <laughs> I think the it's a major goal for the EHT at, at 230 gigahertz to be able to detect uh, the jet. Um, and uh, right now we only get the ring emission, but it's probably because the images so far that we've made don't have enough of these intermediate spacings that sample the kind of larger scale structures. So it's possible we already have a jet detection and data that we've, we've taken, but we haven't yet gotten the results. But uh, uh, yeah, finding out the location of where gamma ray emission is, is created is a, uh, is a pretty important goal. And also just finding the connection between the accretion flow dynamics and the jet dynamics is a pretty important goal. Did you want to say something, something more? Question. You said I, your slide said the telescope is built to survive to minus 73 degrees. What's the coldest temperature that's been measured at, at the summit of Greenland? 68. 68. <laughs> I think we got we got a spec. That's the, that's the master of specs. Master of GLT specs. Uh, yeah. Right. Right. Okay. It's only getting warmer, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> in Greenland, no storm. Jet launching may be very directly related to massive mm -hmm. storm. Yes, that's why in the summit, the tulip is very strong. I think if we are aiming at the jet, it's probably better to do a video. Right? Mm -hmm. I think in that part, the um, EHT or, or NGHT will be much, have much better chance to get something meaningful for, the, for studying jet. Yeah, better than on the yeah. Well, we are you know, like we we are actually trying to zoom in. <laughs> um, that's that's actually opposite direction of resolving <laughs> studying jets. But nevertheless, I think we can. Uh, maybe six gigahertz always on our menu. Any other question? Comments? Oh. I just wonder if do we have any idea how to find a pen of position? <coughs> Yeah, I think I, I know how to do it, but I think well, I'll give it to our master or something. Maybe teach you. So we do uh, you know, well, well, two GPS rotation, right, every day. On a, I think eventually we we will we'll map out the uh, the trail of the ice sheet. It's slow, <laughs> so in a sense we probably can predict where where is the location. Any other question, comments? Yes. Uh, uh, does the size of the photo ring depend on anything in addition to the black hole mass, or is it only black hole? I think most of it might be mostly, mostly the black hole mass. Okay. And no, the spin. Spin, right? <laughs> spin. This is, this I said most. I said most. This is actually really important, right? That the spin contributes to the, to the size and the shape uh, of the ring. The ring is also, it's distorted from being circular uh, if the spin is, is, is non-zero. And that's, 
that's one of the real advantages of, of doing this experiment is that uh, you might be more sensitive to spin. And then there are all these predictions from non-GR theories, uh, adding a quadrupole moment to the, to the black hole, uh, or uh, non-black hole compact object theories that predict distortions of the shape. And so this is the, that's the kind of GR physics that you can test uh, by having a really good measurement of the photon. <coughs> So I tried to not talk about this, but it's, I think the photon ring is a major breakthrough of which it potential <laughs> the breakthrough we're expecting to get. But uh, if we increase this using the photosynthesis synthesis at high frequency, we we have we have better resolution, finer resolution, and we can we can image more black black holes. Last time I checked, what five more? Something like something that. like that. Yeah. Right now we only have, have two, and then and also then I think we can study the even other kind of jets, right? Smaller. Smaller black hole, uh, certainly not M87 or Sagittaria A star because they're too big. <coughs> but when we study smaller, smaller black hole, you can see the jets, and we can also can image more black hole images. As a time, we can kind of bore <laughs> another one. <laughs> okay, so time is up. So uh, uh, again, that uh, uh, tomorrow, uh, 7 p.m., we have the uh, public talk. Uh, at the uh, first floor to show the our latest uh, 2018 HD report, including GRP. So if you're interested in, interested in please uh, join the talk. Although mostly it will be Chinese, except one that the group will talk in English <laughs> because it's public talk. So we aim to well, for the public so that we. It's, 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 it's not this talk. Tomorrow's talk will be most. It's on the. <laughs> well, well, on the EHT results. Yeah. Yeah. I can say that, right? Yeah. Okay, so thanks to the speaker again. Thank you.